So it's that time once again. It's the beginning of the year, and this is usually when I do my full sneaker collection videos because I like to archive what sneakers I have at the beginning of every year. Now, like most years, I've laid out my entire sneaker collection all over my floor. It's a mess. It looks terrible. Well, it actually looks really cool because it's a bunch of really cool sneakers, but it's really just kind of impossible to walk around. So once this video is over, I'm actually going to be getting rid of just a huge amount of sneakers. I know I say that every single year, but there's going to be a vlog coming up where I kind of decide which sneakers I'm getting rid of, but a lot of them I'm actually going to put up on a website so you guys could buy some of them for yourselves. So in a way, this is kind of the most bittersweet sneaker collection video I've ever done because after January, I think I'm going to only have like half of my collection. What's up everybody, I'm Seth Fowler, and today we're taking a look at my entire sneaker collection at the beginning of 2021. I think it's about 125 pairs. Thanks so much for tuning in today. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and that notification bell down below if you haven't yet, and also make sure to give me a follow on Instagram and on Twitter at RealSethFowler. But the reason I'm archiving these sneakers now and the reason that I'm getting rid of so many sneakers now is because well, I feel like I'm growing up. <laughs> Definitely not to say that having a large sneaker collection is immature or wrong in any way. I think it's awesome and I respect a lot of people who have these insane collections, but for me personally, I found that I really only wear about half of my sneakers and with, you know, a house and with just everything else going on, I just feel like there's places that my money could be used better than in just pairs of sneakers that are sitting around in my closet. I'm also on this like Dave Ramsey slash The Minimalist podcast kick right now, so I'm just kind of re-evaluating everything that I have and sort of trying to refocus in a way that I think is gonna be more valuable for myself and for my family in the future. That said, I'm still in love with sneakers. I still obviously run a sneaker channel as my main job, so I'm not gonna be getting rid of like all my sneakers, not even close, but there are just some sneakers that I feel like I don't need anymore and they just don't add any value to my life. So those are the sneakers that I'm gonna be getting rid of. But obviously before I do that, I wanna archive every Everything that I have so even though I don't have the sneakers in my collection anymore I can remember them and remember the good times this is getting really sappy and weird I think I'm just gonna dive right into this collection because I don't really want to go down this rabbit hole anymore <laughs> so the first shoe in my Adidas or Adidas collection is this pair of Adidas superstars I believe they were part of the anniversary collection that dropped a little while back I think it was maybe the middle of 2020 I'm not 100% sure it came in this really cool like TV screen package that Adidas sent over. I think I still have it somewhere, maybe in my garage, but it was a super cool pack. I think the Superstar is one of the most iconic Adidas sneakers of all time. I'm not the biggest fan of these gold laces. I feel like they're a little bit too much of a pop, but I can always switch them out for white laces and I may do that eventually. Or I might actually end up keeping these just unworn in that sort of TV protective case because I feel like that's a really cool package and it just looks really cool all together. Next up, we've got a pair of Adidas Terex hikers or Terex uh, winter shoes or something like that. I'm not exactly sure what the name of these are, but Adidas sent these over, or Terex sent these over a couple weeks ago, and I meant to actually film an unboxing, and I never got around to it. Um, but I am going to post an Instagram post just to kind of thank Adidas for sending over this awesome pair of sneakers, and a coat, by the way. It also came with this insane winter jacket, so stay tuned for that Instagram post. Once again, give me a follow on Instagram, at RealSethFowler, because it's going to be a banger. Hopefully, if I uh, end up getting my wife to take the picture, because I can't take good pictures of myself. <laughs> After that, we've got the Adidas ZX 2K Boost. This is actually one of my most worn sneakers over the last couple weeks, just because it's always at my front door. It's easy to throw on, and it's very comfortable, because you've got a full-length Boost midsole. And I love the retro styling of this sneaker, or the retro futuristic styling of this sneaker. I think they did a good job with this shoe, and I don't know how well it's performing, sales-wise. Um, I would assume that it's not like going crazy because you don't see this in everyone's feet But I think it's a good shoe if you haven't tried it and you find one on sale definitely pick it up Then after that we've got the Adidas Alpha Bounce which I got in this crazy package from Adidas Actually, let me grab it really quick I use this to hold my zoom which actually connects to my microphone and records all the audio So even though I've had this for like two or three years I've just kind of used it as like a stand for stuff because I think it looks cool and of course the shoes themselves are nice, too I've worn them once or twice, but they really just kind of end up staying in this canister because it looks really cool with both sneakers in there. So they're a nice pair of sneakers, they're nothing crazy, they're nothing amazing, but they're a good, solid, comfortable pair of shoes. After that, we've got a pair of the Adidas Ultra Boost 1.0s in triple white. This is the 2020 Retro that came out last year. I had the 2015 pair back when they first released, and uh, it was like my favorite pair of Ultra Boosts. And um, I don't know why I got rid of it the first time, but I did. Now I have another pair. However, it is beat, so I need to throw this in the washing machine. <laughs> then we've got the Adidas Ultra Boost 21, which I just dropped a review on. Huge shout out to Adidas for sending these over as well. In fact, most of the sneakers that we've looked at so far, Adidas has actually sent over, but this is genuinely one of the most comfortable sneakers I've ever worn. I think it's the most comfortable Ultra Boost. I know not everyone loves the way that the sneaker looks, but I think they did a great job. Shout out to Adidas' design team. Awesome pair of sneakers. After that, we've actually got a pair of Adidas Ultra Boost 5.0s. I think this is also the NASA collaboration. 
I bought this shoe back on December 4th, I think, to do a review of this shoe, and um, it didn't arrive until like yesterday, and it's January 22nd. So it took over a month for this shoe to come. I don't know if I'm still gonna do a review because this shoe's been out for so long, but let me know in the comment section down below if you guys wanna see a review of this. After that, we've got a shoe which I absolutely love. This is the Adidas Futurecraft 4D. This is one of the first 3D printed sneakers, or I guess partially 3D printed sneakers to hit the market, and I've just worn the crap out of this shoe. This is like one of my favorite sneakers in my collection. I took out the insole because it allows the air to come up through the midsole all the way up and kind of ventilate your foot. Super cool looking sneaker, super cool technology. I think it's an awesome shoe. Next up, we've got a shoe from the Adidas Arizona collaboration. Arizona is like one of my favorite drinks. And uh, the fact that they collaborated with Adidas on this shoe is very, very cool. This is the Adidas uh, Young One, I believe. I have two pairs of these, one that I wear and one that I uh, just keep fresh. It's based off the Arizona Green Teas can pattern, which I think is really cool. It's very busy, and because all these little flowers are embroidered, it is a little bit stiffer of a shoe, but interesting shoe, love the collaboration. It's cool. Of course, we've got another Adidas Arizona collaboration. This is also on a young one. I think this is for the, um, is it their sweet tea? I have not worn this shoe because I only have one pair of these and it's technically a promo sample. In fact, I think there's actually sample tags on it. Yeah, love the way it looks. Um, I wish I had two pairs because I would definitely rock the second pair a lot. I guess at this point we should take a look at my slides. I don't have a lot of slides, but I do have two pairs of Adidas slides. I've got the Adelettes and the Chancletas. Is that how you pronounce it? I keep forgetting. The Adelettes I actually designed on my Adidas to say 250K subs, right when I hit 250K subs. I think that was maybe two years ago. Then we've got the Chancletas, I think. Um, this is also sort of a boost slide. You've got a full length boost midsole. It's super soft underfoot and uh, I love the colorway. I love the mints and the oranges. Very, very nicely done slide. Moving on with the Pharrells, we've got the Adidas Pharrell Tokyos, uh, Tokyo Runner. I don't remember exactly what the name was. I just got these a couple weeks ago in this uh, crazy Adidas package. I love the colorway of the shoe. I think the mint color is sick with the sort of light pastel pink and the bright orange. Super interesting pair of sneakers. I've only worn it like twice since I've gotten it, but that's because I just have so many other pairs of sneakers I just haven't had the time. Next up is a pair of, I guess, Pharrell Boost You Wears that I kind of put together with Ubic Lab a couple years back at an Adidas event. They gave you the opportunity to take an upper and a midsole and combine them and create your own shoe, and so this is what I came up with. Um, I really like the way that it looks. It's definitely a little bit more unique than a pair of Pharrell's. I've actually worn this pair even though it's very uh, handmade and it's kind of falling apart, but a uh, super cool story and you guys should definitely check out the video. After that, we've got the all yellow pair of Pharrell Human Race NMDs with the black sock liner. Super nice pair of sneakers. I did not think I would wear this shoe that much, but I've ended up wearing it a bunch, like way more than I would have thought, especially because it's such a crazy and out there colorway. Continuing on with Pharrell's, we've got another pair of NMDs in the all green colorway. I think they sent this over for Christmas. I've worn this probably two or three times times. The, the prime knit upper is a little bit stiffer, so it's not as comfortable as some of the other pairs, but I think aesthetically, I like it a lot more. You don't see a lot of all green sneakers, so nice to have in the collection. Next up, we've got even more Pharrell's, but all of these Pharrell's are promo samples, which kind of makes them special and means that I'm never going to wear them. So this is the Pharrell Extra Eye promo sample. It comes with the sample tags and the sample box and all sort of good stuff. Super nice colorway. I wish I'd gotten a pair of these for myself just to rock, but as nice as this shoe is, I'm just going to keep it in a box. It's a sample. I want to have like a really cool sample collection, so unfortunately, Never gonna get to wear this one. Okay, so next up we've got another promo sample, this time in the all white colorway with the black sock liner. Again, promo tag right there. Super cool that Adidas kept sending these over for a while. They still are, actually. I'm blown away that they keep sending me samples. That's so cool. Like, back in like 2015, when I started going to SneakerCon as a sneaker customizer, I would walk around the booths and see all these like crazy sample sneakers, and I always wanted to have one. And the fact that Adidas is just sending them to me is just beyond belief for me. So super stoked on this. Love the colorway. Next up, we've got, I think my favorite Pharrell Human Race NMD colorway of all time. It's this amazing like tan and red and I guess semi-translucent tan colorway. Again, promo sample. Love it. This is another pair that I wish I had a second pair to rock, just like a non-sample pair to rock because I think this is the best Pharrell to ever release. I love it. I think it's a gorgeous, gorgeous shoe. Then continuing on with the samples, we've got another Pharrell Human Race NMD. However, this shoe is a little bit different, not just because it isn't your standard Pharrell Human Race NMD. It is an Adidas NMD, and it is technically a pair of Pharrells, but it's an NMD R1, so it's a completely different model. But for me, what's so cool about this particular sneaker is that this is not only just a sample, but it's an actual factory sample. It's not a promo sample. It's not something that Adidas sends out to their, their influencers and the people that they work with. This is actually a legitimate sample from a factory to Adidas to show them what the shoe could end up looking like in this colorway. It's got the actual sample tags. It's an incredible piece of 
sneaker history. And it's something that I just still can't believe Adidas sent over. It's it's an incredible shoe. I'm just so stoked on this shoe. And uh, if you guys wanna check out that unboxing, I believe I dropped it like right before Christmas. So if you guys wanna see the unboxing where I got this pair of sneakers, make sure to check that out. And then the next shoe up is actually another really cool Adidas sneaker. This is actually a friends and family pair of the Ubik Adidas collaboration on the Boost You Wear 2.0. So this is a like a very, very rare shoe because I think there was only like maybe, well, I don't know how many friends and family Ubik has, but it was only for friends and family. So the fact that they gave me a pair of these, I'm just, I'm honored, I'm blown away, I'm so stoked on it. And I think it's an incredible looking sneaker. I think the standard collaboration between Ubik and Adidas on the Boost You Wear 2.0s comes in white, and they actually did give me a special white edition as well, but it's just such a clean shoe, and I'm honored that Ubik, or I guess now Atmos, thinks of me as their friends and family. That's so sick. But now we move on to a lot of people's favorite category, and that's Adidas Yeezys. And starting off that category, we've got a pair of the Adidas Yeezy Boost 350 V2s in the static colorway. So I've had a lot of 350 V2s over the last couple years, I think probably over 30 pairs. It's been insane, but I've actually just decided to narrow it down to one, and this is the only pair of 350 V2s I have left and the reason for that is because I've worn the crap out of this sneaker It's a good-looking shoe and it's very wearable I could have obviously kept some other pairs of 350 V2s But it's just not a shoe I felt like I needed multiple pairs of because I just don't wear this shoe as much as I would like and if I had like 20 pairs of them, I would just never wear them. Next is a pair of Adidas Yeezy 500s. You've probably seen this pair of sneakers a lot in Apothecary shoots because we use this shoe for almost every single shoot because it's such a versatile sneaker, especially in this colorway. And as for me, I only have one pair in my collection. I believe this is the Salt colorway. I don't remember what the name of this one is, but I mean, to be honest, it looks like a lot of the other 500s, so I guess it doesn't really matter what the name of this sneaker is, but awesome shoe. I wear it a lot. Then we've got a shoe which I think hasn't gotten enough love over the last couple years, and that's the Yeezy 750 in chocolate. To be honest, this shoe isn't the most wearable sneaker in the world. It's a little bit bulky. It's not the most comfortable shoe, but it's a big part of Yeezy history, and as the first Adidas Yeezy model to release, I feel like it's one of those shoes that if you love Yeezys and you want to have a Yeezy collection, you need to have at least one pair. Now, for me personally, I think I've only worn this pair like five or six times um, and it's one that as much as I like it and as nice as it looks I don't know if I'm gonna keep it because I just don't see myself wearing it again. Then we've got, I think, my favorite Yeezy sneaker or Adidas Yeezy sneaker of all time, and that's the Yeezy 700 Wave Runner. This is actually my first and only pair. This is a pair that I pre-ordered back in 2017. I made a whole video about it and everyone was like, that shoe sucks, I hate it, but I've always loved it. It's an incredible looking sneaker and now everyone's about 700, so I don't know what that's about, but it's a shoe that I've always loved. I love the colorway and how different it is, and it's incredibly comfortable. This is a shoe that will never be leaving my collection. I'm gonna wear this one to the ground and then probably buy a second pair. And then I think, actually rounding off all the Adidas sneakers, we're gonna end it with one of my favorite sneakers of 2020, and that's the Adidas Yeezy Foam Runner. I know a lot of you guys hate this shoe, but until you actually wear this shoe and until you feel how it feels on your foot, you won't get it. I've said it a million times, but I think this shoe is the future of footwear. Maybe not in this design, but uh, I think this sort of foam and like the croc aesthetic is gonna become sort of the new norm. And I love it. I, I think it's an awesome step forward. It's so versatile. If it gets dirty, you just throw it in the sink. It's an awesome pair of shoes. And personally, I like the way it looks. I like how it looks like a, a seashell on your foot or like a, an alien skeleton. I think it's dope. But even though we're done with Adidas, we can continue on with a brand that's actually owned by Adidas and that's Reebok. And right here, I've got the Reebok Question Mid in the Halloween colorway that just dropped this year. You guys can see I'm obviously an Allen Iverson fan. I hope that Allen Iverson's jersey's up there. Yeah, because sometimes I have Lamar's jersey up there. I never know which one I have up there, but good thing that worked out. This shoe is mad cool. It starts out as like a tan, but you can actually cut away the upper and uh, it reveals this interesting Halloween pattern. Speaking of the question mid, I've got another pair in the two-way colorway. So this is obviously a Sixers themed colorway. The right shoe comes with the blue suede toe and the left shoe comes with the red suede toe. It's an awesome looking sneaker. I wear this to a ton of different Sixers games. Mad comfy and just a great sneaker overall. I think the question mid just doesn't get enough love anymore. It's an awesome sneaker and I'm glad they're retroing it. And then rounding off Reebok with a ridiculous shoe, this is a Shaq size 22 Reebok pump. Now I only have one side of the pair and that's because this is actually a pair that was signed by Shaq himself. I got this from a pristine auction video a little while back. Um, obviously he signed both sides of the pair and then split them up and they were sold that way. But it's obviously a really cool pair of sneakers, not only because it's signed by Shaq, but also because it comes in his size. And you can just see how large his feet are when compared to like a normal size nine pair of sneakers. It's ridiculous, it's, it's unbelievable in fact. I actually stood next to Shaq at an All-Star Weekend event and uh, it's just, it's unbelievable how big that dude is. 
And uh, you kind of get a sense of his scale when you look at this shoe, especially next to me. Like it's basically the size of my body. This is a shoe that obviously I'm never gonna wear. It's gonna sit on a shelf and I might even um, throw it in a case or something because of the fact that it's signed. I've got all the authentication like paperwork with it as well. So we'll see what I end up doing with it, but you've probably seen it in the background of a couple videos by this point. But now that Reebok's done, I guess we could move on to some other brands that I only have a few pairs of sneakers of. And I guess we can start off with this pair of Under Armors. So this is actually a custom pair by Jeff Dankliffs in honor of Joel Embiid and Mountain Dew is actually for a Mountain Dew sponsored video. It comes with actual Philadelphia 76ers jersey material sewn onto the tongue, which is super sick. It's obviously got 215 and Embiid sprayed onto the side, but it's an awesome display piece. And it's also really cool to see Embiid kill it this year. Like I'm really, really stoked to see him kind of in his element. And uh, I think the Sixers could go all the way. Well, I guess now that the Nets have Harden, it kind of changes everything up, but hopefully they fall apart. I don't know, but uh, the Sixers are killing it this year. Don't sleep on them. After that, we've actually got a pair of Sockneys, which is a collaboration with A Few. I love this collaboration. I also love A Few. They keep sending over awesome stuff, and um, this is one of my favorite things they've ever sent over. Sockney is not a brand that I have a lot of pairs of, but the pairs that I have had in the past, I've loved. And this is the pair that I've worn probably the most out of any Sockney sneaker I've ever owned. It's a super clean looking pair of sneakers. It comes with this amazing green suede on the toe. This cool, like, I guess, blanket material, I don't know what to call this, on the midfoot. And then you've also got a glow-in-the-dark outsole, which is super cool. Then moving over into Converse, I've got a special pair of Chuck Taylor All-Star High um, Looney Tune collaboration sneakers that I think Warner Brothers sent me like back when my channel first started. Uh, interesting pair of shoes. I was never, I shouldn't say this, but I was never like a really a huge Looney Tunes fan. I love Space Jam. That's about it. And then rounding off my Converse's, I've got this really cool collaboration by Anderson Blue. I think it was a collaboration not only with Converse, but also with Foot Locker. And this collab is just a really interesting and also super cool looking pair of chucks. You've got this lemon print all over the upper, I guess, for lemonade. And I just love when my friends do collaborations. I think it's so cool to actually own a pair of sneakers that someone I know actually created. Super cool to see, and I think it turned out really great. And this is a shoe that I have not worn yet, but I plan to when the summer starts to roll around because it's a clean, summery looking sneaker. But moving into Vans, we've got this pair of Skate Highs from the Vans Vault collection. This was actually only sold, I think, at the store in New York and a store somewhere else. But uh, it's a kind of limited pair of Skate Highs. I've worn it a lot, even though it's this crazy colorway. I just love the way it looks. I love the sort of warm tones that they used on the sneaker. And for a $90 shoe, the materials that they've used are just next level. It doesn't make sense. Like the suede's feel super, super premium. More premium than a lot of like Jordans. And they're double the price. So crazy to see. Love Vans, it's an awesome sneaker. And then of course my go-to Vans are the Vans Old Schools in black. This is a special edition, I think this is the Style 36 edition, which means that it was made to the original Vans spec. The newer modern versions of Vans Old Schools are slightly different. This one was made, I believe, in Italy, and uh, even though it looks very similar, is slightly different and a little bit more expensive. Next up, we've got actually my only pair of Tims at the moment, which is kind of crazy. I don't live in New York anymore, so I don't have to have like a bunch of pairs of Tims, but this is actually a pair of Timberlands, it's a collaboration with staple mid cut also so it's a little bit more comfortable than like a high top of butters but I dig it of course we've got a pair of John Geiger 002s in the uh, the high top variant I think it's the original variant very cool sneaker it's so cool to see someone like build their own brand um, and John Geiger's done an incredible job it's an awesome looking pair of sneakers I've worn it a good amount and even though it's like pretty minimal it's surprisingly comfortable okay so next up is a shoe from a friend of mine and that is the Mosh Centralia runner Mosh is one of the most well-known sneaker customizers of all time he's incredible and he just released his first original sneaker, the Mosh Centralia Runner. And I've got to say, he absolutely killed it with this shoe. This shoe is gorgeous, and I wear it all the time. Like, I'm not even lying. I really wear this shoe all the time. But I'm just honestly blown away by the quality and the color of this sneaker. It's just, it's an incredible, incredible piece. So shout out to you, Mosh. You've killed it. Then let's move over into Puma. And the first shoe in my Puma collection is the Puma Clyde All Pro. And this is actually a shoe which uh, I think wear testers called the best basketball sneaker of 2020. So shout out to them for that. Um, um, this sneaker is awesome. This is the Elf colorway, and uh, I'm really excited to try this shoe on court. I've obviously been wearing this shoe a lot just for daily lifestyle wear, but I definitely want to try this shoe out on an indoor court because apparently it's the best, so stoked to try it. Next is one of the shoes from the Puma Nintendo collection. This is actually the, what is that on the side of this shoe? Oh no, what did I get on this? So this shoe is based on the NES or the Nintendo Entertainment System. You've got these really cool Mario hits on the tongue and on the insole of the sneaker. I love the colorway, it fits perfectly with the console. Just a great looking shoe overall and uh, I love it. I really do. I think this is an incredible collaboration. Next up we've got one of the Puma RS sneakers. I think this is the RS X3? Maybe, I'm not sure exactly which one it is, but I know it's a, a running system sneaker. I think it's the RSX. 
Let me know in the comment section down below if I'm wrong, but very clean looking sneaker. I love the paneling on the upper of this shoe. They did a great job with this shoe. They seriously killed it. And then the last sneaker in my Puma collection is actually a Puma MCM collaboration, which I believe only ever released as a sample. In fact, I've got one of the sample pairs because MCM was nice enough to send this pair over. This sneaker is absolutely insane looking. I don't love the aesthetics of it, but the fact that this is a sample shoe of this just insane MCM Puma collaboration makes this shoe so special. And uh, while I have tried this sneaker on, I don't think I could rock it because first of all, I'm just afraid to rock samples. And second of all, it's, it's not exactly my style. I actually have a lot more samples than I thought. This is really cool. I feel like I'm a real collector now. <laughs> this is sick. Next up, we've got a pretty ridiculous sneaker and one of the most insane collaborations I've ever seen. And that's the Crocs KFC collab. It actually smells like chicken. That's why my whole room smells like chicken because of this stupid shoe. But I love it though. I love how ridiculous it is. And just the fact that there's actually a chicken drumstick gibbet on the top of this sneaker. That's ridiculous. I guess it's not really a sneaker. I keep calling Crocs sneakers, but they're not really sneakers. I mean, shout out to KFC for this insane collaboration. I was part of a food sneaker collaboration a couple years back. In fact, we'll get to that shoe in a little bit. But I think this is probably the best food sneaker ever released. Maybe that'll change in the future, but this shoe, I mean, KFC and Crocs really created something that got a lot of media attention and that's obviously their goal. So shout out to them for that. Then we move on to a brand which is near and dear to my heart and that is We Are Underdogs. And the first We Are Underdogs shoe that I'm gonna show you guys is actually the Meraki one, which was a collaboration between We Are Underdogs and Bluemon. So this shoe not only looks good, but it's also a really special sneaker to me because this is actually the way that I first got connected with We Are Underdogs. Bluemon hit me up, I think on Instagram, or maybe it was through email, I'm not sure exactly what it was, but he said, hey, I would love to send you a pair of my sneakers. Um, we Are Underdogs doesn't usually send out sneakers to people, but if you're interested in checking it out, I'd love to send it to you, and I was like, absolutely. And from there on, just uh, crazy things happen. So shout out to Blue Mon for just making my collaboration and just a lot of other awesome collaborations happen. If it wasn't for him, I don't know how many more YouTube collaborations would have taken place. Then we've got one of We Are Underdogs best sellers, and that is the We Are Underdogs comma, which was actually designed by designer Kato Joy, awesome guy, incredible industrial designer and incredible sneaker designer. The next shoe actually happens to be Kato Choi's second signature shoe with We Are Underdogs. It is the apostrophe. He loves punctuation, I think is what it is. I'm not 100% sure, but this shoe is so incredibly well designed. It's, it's such a sick looking sneaker. All the little details, like this little flap right there, I just, I love. Usually that detail is inset into the shoe. On this shoe, it's kind of like a little deconstructed hit. I love it. I love the lacing system. Then we've got another awesome We Are Underdogs sneaker designed by a guy named Blake. This is the We Are Underdogs Obscure, or the Wow Obscure, I think is what it's called. Every little detail on this shoe is so well thought out, and it's comfortable. And then finally, we move on to my favorite pair of We Are Underdogs, and that, of course, is the pair that I designed, the We Are Underdogs Seth Fowler Origin. So this is a shoe that if you've watched my channel at all over the last year, you've definitely heard of. This is a shoe that I designed with We Are Underdogs. I flew out to Portugal and filmed the whole process, and it's just been such an incredible experience for me. Having my own sneaker, designing it myself, working with all the materials, seeing the factory in Portugal, just really opened my mind up to sneaker design, which is something that while I went to school for design, I went for industrial design, which I guess is similar to sneaker design because it's just design in general, but it's not really fashion design the way that sneaker design is. And honestly, I'm happy with the way that the shoe came out. The materials are incredible. I like the colorway a lot. This is actually the colorway that was voted on by you guys to be the first colorway. Of course, I was lucky enough to also have three other colorways made. We had the Victoria Ravens colorway, which came in black and white and purple. And then we also had the two shoes that were co-designed by myself and also Jason Diaz. He's an incredible designer. He won the, uh, the We Are Underdogs Origin contest which was a contest to design his own colorway of the shoe. This is a colorway that he designed. It looks incredible. I absolutely love it. And I love even more the second colorway that he did with the shoe, which is the uh, the black version of that colorway. This is probably my favorite version of the shoe ever. And I mean, Jason really just took the shoe to the next level. So shout out to Jason. But I actually have another shoe releasing with We Are Underdogs later in the year. I believe we're gonna call it the Granite. We haven't really totally finalized the name, I don't think, but it's a completely different design. I did it myself. I'm so stoked on it. And you might be able to see some images of it on my Instagram and also on the YouTube community tab, so make sure to check that out. And I guess to round off sneakers that I designed, we've got the Planters Peanuts Crunch Force Ones. And this is a shoe that I designed in collaboration with VaynerMedia and also Garrison in Philadelphia. This shoe is a Planters promotional shoe. I think it ended up selling like 
a couple thousand pairs, which is kind of crazy. I've seen a review by some dude who didn't know who I was on the internet, and he just bought them because it was a planter shoe, which is kind of wild to me. But uh, what I love most about this shoe is that it comes in this really beautiful material. Like, the leathers that were used are incredible, the suede's are incredible, and my sort of design inspiration behind this sneaker was not only well, peanuts, but also like old school retro basketball sneakers that used real materials, real leathers, real suede, and were just built really, really well. And to be honest with you, whether you like the colorway or not, I think the overall paneling on the sneaker came out so nicely, and I just love the way this sneaker looks. I wish it dropped in like a different colorway, in like a, maybe a black and a red, or even like a white and a black colorway, I think that would be sick, but I'm really proud of this one, and it's the first shoe that I ever designed that got made, so definitely a special shoe in my collection. But now we move on to my favorite sneaker brand, of the moment, and I think over the last year or two, and that's New Balance. And the first shoe in my New Balance collection is this really cool low top Omnis in this pink and green colorway. This shoe is apparently a really solid basketball performer. I've never played in the low top version. I've only ever worn it like around the house. I mean, I think I got this shoe during quarantine, so all the basketball courts were closed. I might be wrong about that. I might have only actually worn it during quarantine. I don't remember. Here is the high top version of the shoe in the white, gold, and semi-translucent blue colorway. This is probably one of my favorite basketball sneakers aesthetically of the last decade. I think it's just a beautifully designed sneaker. It looks futuristic, but also has some retro hits. It's got this really cool, almost like claw detail that holds the laces. It's such a sick shoe and I love it. I've also got two pairs of Kawhi's new signature shoe with New Balance. I believe this is the four balance colorway because of that stupid game where he beat the Sixers. And then this is the uh, the Christmas colorway. Both really awesome looking sneakers. I, uh, I think I prefer this colorway just because it's a little bit more wearable on court. This one is also really nice, but it definitely has a winter vibe to it. Next up, we've got the New Balance 480 in the Jolly Rancher collaboration colorway. Kawhi Leonard's favorite candy is Jolly Rancher, hence the Jolly Rancher New Balance collaboration. This shoe is pretty cool. It features a multicolor outsole that looks like all the different Jolly Rancher colorways kind of melted onto the outsole of the shoe. The, uh, I call them colorways, flavors. Their flavors. Next, we've got another Jolly Rancher New Balance collaboration, this time on the 327. It comes in the blue raspberry flavor slash colorway with a green apple outsole. Very nice looking shoe. I love the angry Jolly Ranchers there on the medial side. After that, we've got one of my favorite hiking shoes of all time. This is the New Balance Bodega X Racer. This is obviously a collaboration with Bodega. Shout out to Bodega, they always treat me right. This collab is so sick, and the X Racer silhouette is just such a comfortable and great hiking shoe. I've hiked all over the place with this sneaker, and it's one that I actually wear even when I'm not hiking because it's just a good all around shoe. And the colorway, while a little bit toned down from other New Balance Bodega collaborations, is still mad clean. Clean. Then we've got a shoe which I actually just picked up, and that is the New Balance 5740. It's a, a new modern take on the 574, I think. I'm not exactly sure about the history of this shoe, but I love this colorway. I love the aesthetic of the shoe. It reminds me a lot of like old school Apple logos right there. You've got the intelligent choice written on the top of the tag. Very cool looking sneaker and one that I've worn probably only once at this point, but I need to throw more in my heavy rotation because it's such a cool looking sneaker. Next up, we've got one of my favorite New Balance collaborations and that's the New Balance Amy Leon Door 827 collab in the yellow colorway. Apparently ALD revived the 827 silhouette and I'm really happy that they did because it's one of my favorite New Balance silhouettes. And I love all the little hits of color like the greens and the reds and the blue. It's such a unique looking sneaker and one that uh, I wish I had two pairs of, or maybe like a different pair in the other colorway or something like that. Then we've got another New Balance Bodega collaboration, this time on the 997S. I believe this shoe is called Better Days Ahead, I think is what the collaboration name was. It's got this really cool like sun setting colorway, and the 997S is just such a great silhouette overall. It's comfortable, it's fast looking, all the materials used on the upper are incredible, and I think Bodega, this is like one of their crowning achievements. Also, shout out to Bodega for sending this pair over. I actually bought the first couple of Bodega New Balance collaborations and uh, they were nice enough to send me this pair, so shout out to them for that. Of course, having that pair, I had to have this pair. This is the Bodega New Balance No Days Off colorway. There was a third colorway out of the Bodega New Balance 997S's. I didn't have that one just because it was so expensive uh, on the resale market, it's kind of crazy. But this one is just such a clean look. You've got this really nice white mesh on the toe. You've got some beautiful leathers and suede used on the sneaker. It's an awesome shoe. And like I've said a million times, whoever works on designing these collabs for Bodega needs a raise because this dude is like insanely, insanely talented. So shout out to whoever it is. I love you. You're awesome. Keep it up. Next up is one of my favorite pickups of this year so far, even though, well, I've really only had two, but this shoe is definitely gonna be up there for the year. And that's the Salehi Bembury New Balance 12, 2002R? 
I think is what it was. It is the 2002R. This shoe is so sick. I think the colorway is incredible. The use of this like yellow mesh is also really nice. I think that's standard for the uh, the 2002R, but the suede that he used, the blue accent, just the overall colorway of this shoe is insane. And I love the fact that he's doing another collaboration with New Balance. I think it's a green pair, but I do have to say that I don't like that colorway as much as this colorway. This colorway is just, for some reason, man, it just gets me. I just, I love this shoe. And then we've got my personal favorite shoe of 2020, and that's the New Balance 992 Don't Be Mad by Joe Fresh Goods. This collab is just so sick and so well done. It's one of the best collabs I think I've ever owned. And my favorite part about this collaboration is not only the colors that were used on the shoe, but the fact that this shoe was designed after the anatomy of a heart. So the whole idea is that this shoe is supposed to look like the cross section of a heart. So on the 992, you've already got what seem to be like little ventricles, but when you put in the different colors, like the different tones of pinks and reds, it really makes this shoe look like a heart. I wish I had multiple pairs of these, but unfortunately I don't. And resale on these pairs are kind of nuts. I think it's like 1200 right now, which is just also insane for a pair of New Balance, but love this sneaker, one that uh, I wear a lot. But now we move right into Nike, and the first shoe in my Nike collection is a pair of Air Force One Lows, but they're actually a special edition. They're the Connect version with a little chip in the heel that you can scan with your phone. Now, originally when these shoes first dropped, you could scan the heel with your phone and they would give you like special access to certain sneakers, and apparently that was exclusive to New York City, which is where I was at the time, but it only lasted like three months, and the shoes that they dropped were like, not that great. So I guess because of that, this shoe is like a slightly better Air Force One low made of slightly nicer materials, and that's about it. Continuing on with AF1 lows, we've got a pair of the Volt Off-White Air Force Ones. This is one of those shoes that I didn't like when I first saw it because I was never really a huge fan of like highlighter green, but then I bought a pair for my wife, and I just love the way it looked on her feet, and uh, I had to grab a pair for myself. Continuing with Off-White, we've got a pair of Off-White Nike Blazers in the uh, Grim Reaper colorway. This is just an all-black Off-White Blazer mid. I actually don't have any other pairs of blazers at the moment and this is really a pretty decent shoe overall I really like the way that it looks it's pretty toned down for an off-white sneaker and it's one that I've worn a decent amount. Next up is one of my favorite shoes in my collection by far, and one of my most worn shoes, surprisingly, and that is the Off-White OG Presto. This shoe I picked up right around the time that it released. I did a video for StockX and they actually sent me this pair, and this is one that um, I've literally worn probably hundreds of times. I, I really wear this shoe all the time, and it's crazy to me how much the value has skyrocketed on this shoe. I think when I got it, it was only going for like 800, 900 bucks, which is still a lot, but right now the shoe is like, I mean, in brand new condition, I think it's like 2,500 bucks, $3,000 in a size nine, which is just absolutely insane. But to be real, I, I kind of get it because it's such an awesome sneaker and it's very, very comfortable. After that, we've got one of the most beat sneakers in my entire collection, and that is the Air Max 90 Infrareds from 2015. I've worn this shoe so much. In fact, I've started to wear it for yard work because I don't really want to be seen out in public with it because of how beat it is. It also smells just awful. Um, so this is a shoe I'll probably end up uh, throwing out at some point just because it's not it's not got much life left. <laughs> After that, we've got another pair of Air Max 90s. This is actually a pair that was sent to me by Nike and EA Sports. It's the Madden 2020, I think. Air Max 90, it's a custom shoe that they didn't make too many of. The laces and the tongue tag on the right shoe come in red and on the left shoe they come in blue. Um, it's a nice looking sneaker. I have not worn it yet. I don't know if I will just because I think it's like a special custom shoe that I don't want to ruin. So because of that, it might just stay in my collection as like a, a nice art piece. Next up, we've got another Air Max. This is the Air Max 97 Ones, the Sean Witherspoons. I'm sure you guys know everything there is to know about this sneaker. It fits pretty large, so I had to go down half a size and even then it's still a little little big, but uh, I've worn the sneaker a lot. It's a good looking shoe, and I actually am excited for it to start fraying along the upper because that's what it's supposed to do. So this next shoe is actually really special to me because this shoe was a gift from uh, Big Boy Cheng when I was visiting the Philippines. This is the Supreme Lunar Flyknit Ones, or the Supreme Flyknit Lunar Ones. Uh, one of those shoes that I never thought I'd have in my collection just because of how, like, of a grail it was. And uh, he just gave it to me. It was, like, one of the most generous things anyone's ever done for me. And I, I can't thank you enough, man, for that, because that's that's crazy. After that, we've got a shoe which single-handedly changed my mind about Vapor Maxes. I didn't like the Vapor Maxes too much before this shoe. And then after having this sneaker, I think they're fine. The changes that they made to the Vapor Max midsole unit really made all the difference in the world. And now... I'm kind of a fan of Apron Maxes, so we'll see what they come out with in the future. And then we've got one of my go-to running sneakers, the Nike Pegasus 37. So this shoe doesn't really look like much, it looks like a running sneaker, but I've got to say it's one of the most comfortable shoes in my collection, and that's because it's got this incredible React midsole and this awesome four-foot air unit. It just feels awesome underfoot, and it's a good running sneaker. I like more cushioned running sneakers because I don't run that much, and you know it feels good to sort of be running on clouds, but other runners don't like that. But moving on, we get right into the Nike Dunks, and the first Nike Dunk that 
that I have is the Nike Dunk Low Syracuse. So this shoe obviously comes in the Syracuse colorway. I'm not a Syracuse fan at all, but I think this orange and white looks really clean together. And I've actually worn this shoe a lot more than I expected. So this is one that's definitely staying in my collection. After that, we've got a pair of shoes, which was actually given to me by Bodega actually early before these sneakers even released. And it's the Bodega Nike Dunk Highs. This was a shoe that I was really, really looking forward to. And so when it showed up at my door, I was first of all blown away. I didn't even know it was coming. Second of all, I just love all the little details on this shoe. Everything about it just makes it so unique. It looks like a baseball glove, and I think that was some of the inspiration behind it, but I love this shoe. I've worn it a decent amount, and it just feels like a quality sneaker. That's what I love about it. Next is the Tiffany Dunk Highs. This is a Nike SB Diamond collaboration. Obviously, it's not as hyped up as the low top version, but it's still an awesome sneaker. I actually got a pair of these when they first dropped back in 2014. 13, I think, or 2014, um, but I ended up selling it. It also wasn't my size. So when I was able to get a new pair of these in my size, I was stoked, and I've been rocking it pretty regularly ever since. And then the last pair of dunks that I had in my collection are the Nike SB Dunk Low Supremes from 2011 or 12. I don't remember the exact date. I actually got these back in 2019 at SneakerCon DC. It's probably the most expensive sneaker I've ever bought at a sneaker con, but I still got it for a great deal. Shout out to the people who sold it to me. They're awesome people. Um, cool sneaker, but but again, stiff leather, really hurts to wear this shoe, but I'm never getting rid of this one. This one's a pretty cool shoe. But moving over into performance basketball sneakers, we've got a pair of KDs in the YouTube collaboration colorway. So this shoe is kind of special because it was given to me by YouTube, which is super cool. So shout out to YouTube for that. After that, we've got a pair of the Ant Pearl KD 6s, probably the best Ant Pearl KD I think ever released. Obviously, it does have some meaning to me because I lost my mother to uh, breast cancer a couple years ago. Um, actually, the reason I started the channel, I was sort of like, it was a way of dealing with it. But um, um, no, it's an awesome sneaker. It means a lot to me, and I think it's just a beautiful shoe. I love the flowers used on the upper. I think it's a good-looking silhouette. Speaking of meaningful sneakers, next up we've got the Nike Kobe 6 Pro Tro in the Grinch colorway. And obviously this shoe is pretty special because 2020 was the year that we lost Kobe, and so it was kind of cool that Nike actually re-released his most popular sneaker to kind of give people a way of remembering him and remembering his legacy. But now moving into Jordans, we're going to start off with some of the newer, more performance-based Jordans, and this is a pair of the Why Nots. Now, I don't remember exactly which Why Not this is. I think it's the Why Not, maybe the 0.1s or 0.2s. I think it's the 1s. I don't know. I'm not like a huge Why Not fan, but this shoe was really cool to me because it was actually customized by a guy named G working on projects. And uh, he did the exact same custom on my shoe that he did for Russell Westbrook, which is super cool. So there's only two of these in the world. I have one and Russell Westbrook has one. So that's, that's pretty cool. After that, I've got a pair of Gatorade Air Jordan 32s. This came in this crazy Gatorade Air Jordan package, which I actually still have. One of the first big packages ever sent to me by a brand. To be honest, I've just kept the shoe in the package because I want to keep the whole package together. But then getting into my actual performance basketball shoe that I used to wear when I could play basketball. We've got a pair of the Air Jordan 34s, which Jordan Brand actually sent me, and I've only been able to play in like three or four times, but it's an awesome sneaker, and if you can find one of these on sale, it's a good shoe to ball in. But now moving into, I'm sure, a lot of people's favorite category, and that is the Retro Jordans. And the first shoe in my Retro Jordan collection are the Air Jordan 14 Rip Hamiltons. Now, like a lot of people, I wasn't always a huge Air Jordan 14 fan, but when I finally got a pair of like the classic Rip Hamiltons, Hamilton's. Obviously, this is the 2019 retro, I think, or the 2018. Um, I just fell in love with it. It's one of those shoes that you just throw on your feet and you feel great. Next up, we've got the recent release Air Jordan 13 Flint Retros. It's an awesome pair of sneakers. I think everyone should have a pair of at least the Flints if you're going to have a pair of 13s. I love the colorway. I love the gray suede that they used. It's not the highest quality suede, but it's decent. And overall, it's just a really wearable pair of 13s. Moving into Air Jordan 11s, we've got by far my favorite pair of Air Jordan 11s ever, and that's the Breds. This pair is so clean. I love red. I love red and black together. It's just such a classic shoe. It's such a classic colorway, and I love it so much I actually doubled up on it. I have a second pair on ice, which I'm going to rock whenever this pair finally bites the dust. Next up, we've got the Concord 11s, another extremely classic sneaker. This is the most recent release. You've got the 45 on the heel. It's got the slightly higher cut patent leather. Super clean pair of sneakers. I actually had three pairs of these at one point, and I sold the other two, which was stupid because now they're going for a lot more, and I'd like to have a second pair, but it is what it is. You live and you learn. After that, we actually do have a promo sample from Jordan Brand. This is the Air Jordan. 11 win like 92s or are these the 86s i think these are win like 92s they're an all red pair of air jordan 11s i know back in like 2014 around when the red october's released people would have like lost their minds for this shoe but when the shoe actually did release in 2016 i think the all red fad had kind of died down a little bit and it was nowhere near as hyped up as it could have been i still think it's an awesome sneaker and i'm stoked that jordan brand sent me a promo sample of these so this one although pretty worn is still going to stay in my collection for 
forever just because it's cool, it's special, and it's a sample. Next up, we've got the Soulfly 10s, a pair of sneakers that I'm just obsessed with. I love the linen 10s. I was never able to grab a pair of them, and then I was able to grab the Soulfly 10s for retail off of Soulfly's website somehow. I don't know how it happened, but I was able to get them. I've worn them a bunch. I just, I love this color blocking. I love this like tonal tan upper, and I love the materials that they use. Soulfly just like killed it with the, uh, the premium suede and the leather on the sock liner, and also that little hit of teal on both the Jumpman and also on the back of the tongue. It's just such a premium Air Jordan 10, and it's crazy how cheap it's going for right now. I don't think it's ever gonna skyrocket in price, but it's, it's sorely undervalued for what it is. After that, we've got the Gatorade 6s, another shoe that came in that crazy Jordan package that they sent over with the, uh, the Air Jordan 32s. I think it's a nice looking pair of sneakers. It's kind of got that Carmine color blocking. I really want a pair of the Carmines that are coming out this year, really stoked on those, but this pair is solid. And again, I've worn it a couple times, but I'm never gonna get rid of it because it's part of that pack and I wanna just keep all that together. Moving into Air Jordan 5s, we've got a pair of the most recent release, Fire Red 5s. I love this shoe for a lot of reasons. One, because it's just a great looking sneaker. It's a classic sneaker, but two, because the Fire Red 5s are the shoe I customized by far the most. I mean, Roshis were a close second, but the 5s, man, like these Fire Red 5s, I think it was like the 2012 pair. Everyone seemed to have them and everyone seemed to want to get them customized. Next up, we've got the 2013 Bel Air 5s. This is actually probably the last shoe that I camped for. I camped overnight for this shoe and I, um, still wasn't able to get it. This is one of those shoes that maybe doesn't go with everything, but you can throw it on with the right fit and just look fresh as hell. Of course, I have a pair of the Off-White 5s, the most recent release, the Sale colorway. It's an awesome pair of sneakers. I don't like this colorway as much as the black colorway, which I also have, which you guys will see in a second, but still a clean pair of sneakers. Never gonna cut out these circles. I just, I can't do it. I can't do that to the shoe. I've rocked this colorway a few times, and I'm standing by the fact that I think the Off-White 5s are the most comfortable pairs of 5s, especially when you go down half a size. They just got rid of all the unnecessary padding and they feel incredibly light and comfortable on your feet. Of course, the next shoe up is the OG colorway of the Off-White Air Jordan 5s. This is sort of based off the Metallic 5s, and while I don't love the material on the upper, I don't love this like plasticky mesh, I wish I had gone with the suede or something like that, I still think it's an incredible looking sneaker, I still think Virgil did his thing on this shoe, and this is definitely one of the best collaborations of 2020 by far, and another shoe that I think is sorely undervalued. And then finally, my last pair of 5s, we've got a pair of the Tokyo 5s, which I actually won for free at Complex Con, which is just crazy, it's like winning a grail for free is not... Not a very common thing, but this shoe was released back in 2000, either 2009 or 2011. I think it was 2011, and it was released exclusively in Tokyo at the, uh, the Jordan brand store opening. And it's just one of those iconic Jordan shoes. It comes in bright yellow. It's got the 23 embroidery on the heel, which yes, that actually is 23. You can see it in the negative, uh, in the yellow portions of the, uh, the embroidery. It's an awesome sneaker and one that I just still can't believe that I have. But moving into Air Jordan 4s, we've actually got the Air Jordan 4 Reverse Motorsport. And the reason this shoe is so special to me is because this is actually the first shoe that Jordan Brand sent me. So this shoe is like one of those like dream come true type sneakers. Like having Jordan Brand send you shoes is just like one of the craziest things. Next, we've got the PSG Air Jordan 4s that just released last year. This is an awesome looking pair of sneakers. It comes in a very cool like maroon and white colorway. I think it's one of the best Air Jordan 4s to release in a while. I love the PSG logo on the heel. I think that's super clean. And even though I've not been a huge fan of all the PSG Jordan collaborations, this one I think is probably the best one they've dropped. After that, we've got the 2016 White Cement Air Jordan 4s, one of my favorite Air Jordan 4s of all time. This shoe is obviously a little beat, but it's one of the cleanest Air Jordan 4s. It's such a simple and nice colorway, and I just can't wait for them to retro this shoe because I really need one that doesn't have like mud stains and scuffs all over it. Of course, next up, we've got the 2020 Fire Red 4s. I'm sure a lot of you guys saw my StockX video where I bought a bunch of these and then sold a bunch of these. If you guys want to check that out, it's like a couple videos ago. You guys definitely should watch it. But this shoe is obviously one of the most classic Air Jordan 4s, and so when the 2020 release happened, I had to grab a pair. In fact, I grabbed four pairs, uh, but I ended up only keeping one. After that, we've got another very classic Air Jordan 4 colorway. This is the bread Air Jordan 4s, the OG Air Jordan 4. I had to have this shoe. I actually missed out on it when it first dropped or re-retroed a couple years ago. I love this sneaker. I don't love the materials that they used on it. I feel like, you know, they were kind of going for that OG material, which I would have preferred if they had sprung for something a little bit nicer, but it is what it is. Then we move into our Air Jordan 3s, and the first shoe in my Jordan 3 collection is this pair of J 
JTH White Cements. So this shoe is the Tinker variant of the Air Jordan 3s or the Justin Timberlake Tinker Hatfield variant of the shoe. I love this colorway. I love the White Cements. I wish I had an actual pair of White Cements and not the JTH version because I don't love the Nike swoosh on the side. I know that was what Tinker Hatfield originally sketched. I totally get the history behind it, but I just prefer the regular White Cements. Next up are the Katrina 3s or the Hall of Fame 3s. I don't remember what the new name that they gave these shoes were. So this shoe is a retro of a sneaker that was sold for a charity auction to benefit Hurricane Katrina victims. And for some reason, Jordan Brand re-released it as a GR. So a lot of people were able to grab it. I love this colorway. I've obviously worn it just a huge amount. Um, super clean sneaker. Jordan Brand actually blessed me with this pair. So shout out to Jordan Brand for that. And then the last pair of threes I have currently are the BC threes, which are by far my favorite Air Jordan threes of all time. This shoe is a classic. This pair is the 2018 retro. You've got the Nike Air branding on the heel. I actually bought this pair for resale a little bit before they came out because I was trying to bring you guys that early review. I love this sneaker. Another shoe which I just, I wish I doubled up on because this sneaker is like the best three of all time in my opinion. But now we move into my favorite sneaker silhouette of all time and that's the Air Jordan 1s. And the first pair of Air Jordan 1s that I'm gonna show you guys are the Flyknit Bread 1s. So this was a shoe that had a very mixed reception. I think a lot of people either hated it or they loved it. There was really no in between. And uh, it's one of those sneakers that I don't wear very often, but I've gotta say when I do wear it, I'm always surprised by the comfort of the sneaker. After that, we've got my one and only pair of Air Jordan mids. This is the Edison Chen Air Jordan 1 mids. It actually has a tearaway upper that you can rip off that reveals, I think, a black and gold uh, leather pattern of some kind. But um, I love this sneaker. I love the way that the Nike swoosh sort of fades into nothingness towards the heel. That's such a nice touch. I also love the, uh, the Chinese coin on the, uh, the bottom of the laces. I think that's super cool. After that, we've got one of the most popular shoes of 2020, and that's the Air Jordan 1 Mochas. This is a shoe that I didn't realize was gonna blow up the way that it blew up, and I ended up having to, uh, to buy a pair when I didn't really want one, because if I didn't get it then, I was never gonna be able to get it for a decent price. So I grabbed this, I think, for 350, and I obviously haven't worn it yet. I will at some point. I just, uh, haven't had the time. After that, we've got the Forest Green Air Jordan 1s from 2018. This is technically a Celtics colorway, I believe. Um, I'm not a Celtics fan, I'm a Sixers fan, so this shoe, you know, I'm not gonna call it a Celtics colorway, I'm gonna call it more of like an Eagles colorway. I'm also not really an Eagles fan either, but I don't dislike the Eagles the way that I dislike the Celtics. It's a nice shoe, I love the green on this shoe, I just haven't worn it that much, I think I've worn it probably three times. After that, we've got a shoe which I like to call the Cursed Air Jordan 1s. This is a pair of Air Jordan 1 Court Purples from 2018. The reason this shoe is called the Cursed Jordan 1s is because whenever I wear it during a Ravens game, the Ravens lose, and as soon as I take it off during the Ravens game, they somehow turn things around. Um, so this shoe is definitely cursed, and uh, I'm afraid to sell it because if I sell it, whoever buys it is probably gonna wear it just to spite me and uh, screw up my birds. So I don't know what to do about that. Next up, we've got a fan favorite with the Shattered Backboard 1.0s. This was actually the first pair of sneakers I ever bought off StockX, and I wish I had bought more because I bought it for like 300 bucks, 350. It's, it's just such an incredible shoe. I've worn it a good amount of times, but I really wish I just bought a bunch more. Because, oh, it's actually gotten that sparkling on it. I actually haven't gotten any Air Jordan 1s that had that sparkling until just now. So that's kind of surprising. But moving into the very classic Air Jordan 1 colorways, we've got a pair of the 2018 Shadow 1s. Again, another very underrated Air Jordan 1. This colorway is super clean. The 2018 version also comes with some pretty nice leather. And as far as versatile Air Jordan 1 colorways go, this one is kind of like, it's it. This is the one that you can wear with pretty much anything. Of course, next up, I've got a pair of Royals from 2017. I've actually doubled up on this pair. I've got a pair on ice just because of how much I love this sneaker. The Royals are such a clean look. You've got this beautiful bright blue leather on the upper contrasted with this black leather. I did kind of screw this pair up a little bit though because I 3D printed on top of it for a stupid video that I wish I hadn't done. So now it's got all these weird like heat strokes on it or heat stripes on it. I don't know what to call them and uh, it, it kind of ruined it, but you can't really see them from a distance, so I guess it's not that big of a deal. After that, we've got probably my favorite sneaker of all time, and that's the Bread Air Jordan 1s. Now this pair is from 2016, another pair that of course I doubled up on. I've got another pair on ice. I actually had three pairs at one point, and I sold them because I had to pay rent in New York, which sucked. I wish I had kept the third pair because I got it for a great price, but it's an incredible sneaker. I love the leather quality on this shoe, and the tone of red that they used is a little bit more dull, than I think the uh, the original bread ones, but it's just such a clean look, and I, I just, I'm obsessed with this sneaker. I wish I had a million pairs of these, because I'd wear these every single day. Next up, we've got another classic with the 2016 Black Toes. I actually got lucky and hit on these on the sneakers app, and back then in 2016, Air Jordan 1s were hyped, but they weren't as hyped as they are now. So this shoe, I think, was just reselling for like, 
200 bucks, 250 maybe. And again, I wish I had bought a bunch of pairs because I did not realize how much these were gonna blow up. But it's still an incredibly clean and classic Air Jordan 1 and one that I will definitely never get rid of. Of course, you knew this was coming, but we've got a pair of the Chicago 1s from 2015. This pair it was actually the first pair of sneakers I ever bought off the GOAT app. And again, I bought this pair for 350, I think. Wish I had bought more pairs because this pair has just skyrocketed in value and I wish I had like a couple pairs on ice just to have just in case, but it is what it is. After that, we've got a pretty recent pickup with the Air Jordan 1 Travis Scott Lowe's. So this pair I actually picked up from Cam's Kicks in, uh, I forget which town in PA it is, but it's like a two hour drive from my house. Drove over there, wanted to meet him, wanted to check out his uh, store. Awesome place to go. If you guys are in the area, make sure to check it out. It's an awesome pair of sneakers. I have yet to wear it and uh, you know, it's not a bad looking shoe. Next up, of course, are the Travis Scott Air Jordan 1 highs. This is one of the most sought after shoes I think on the market right now. I think these dropped back in 2019. It was like the 2019 shoe of the year. It's amazing how just turning around the Nike swoosh and changing the color to brown made this sneaker as hype as it was. After that, we've got the Storm Blue Union LA Air Jordan 1s. This shoe was really special to me because this is the shoe that I proposed to my wife in back in 2018. It's an awesome pair of sneakers. I love the colorway. I love the concept. I think this sort of mismatched Air Jordan 1 or sewn together Air Jordan 1 is such a sick look. And this colorway is awesome. So shout out to Union LA for creating such a dope Jordan 1. Sticking with Union, I've also got a pair of the Union LA Black Toe Air Jordan 1s. A super clean look. I think colorway wise, I prefer this one to the Storm Blues because it's a little bit more wearable. And this is actually a shoe that I wore on my trip to the Philippines and to Japan. Next up are the Off-White Air Jordan 1 UNCs. This shoe is obviously very hype and I paid way too much money for it, at least back when I first bought it back in 2018. But it is a pretty cool looking sneaker. I love the blue accented by the orange on the laces and on the heel. It's definitely one of those shoes that you have to have the right outfit to rock with it. But uh, you know what, Virgil did his thing on this one, man, and he, he really killed it. I'm sure a lot of you guys knew this shoe was coming, but the off-white Air Jordan 1 Chicago's that were signed by Virgil Abloh. This shoe is not only special because I got it at a Nike event where I got to meet Virgil Abloh and talk to him and have him sign the shoe, but it's also special because this shoe really is one of the reasons my channel is where it is today. The event that I got this shoe at, the Virgil Abloh's Office Hours event, was actually like two months before the shoe ended up releasing to the public. So because of that, I had a review like two months early of one of the hottest shoes of like the last five years. And not only that, but also the fact that I had a vlog of Virgil Abloh actually signing my sneaker, that just blew everything up. It was an incredible experience, not only talking to him, talking about design with him, which was just insane, but him just like literally blowing up my channel was like such a life-changing experience. It really was. Um, so if it wasn't for Virgil, I might not be where I am today, which is crazy to say. And then, finally, the last sneaker in my collection and one of my all-time grails, we have got the original Nike Air Yeezy 1 in the Zen colorway. This is Kanye West's first sneaker with Nike. It's the first silhouette, the first colorway, and this shoe literally changed the sneaker game. Back in 2009, when this shoe first released, I never thought that I'd be able to own this shoe, but now in 2021, 12 years later, I actually have a pair for myself, which is just unbelievable. And it's dead stock, which is even crazier. I got it from Stadium Goods, actually because I did a Farfetch video and Farfetch owns Stadium Goods, so they gave me some credit and this is what I bought. Um, actually, I saved up credit for the last couple months to buy this shoe. But I think resale for this exact pair, the pair that I bought was like $5,000 and they just helped me out with the credit. And like I said, I saved it up for a couple months, so I was able to buy it. But um, this is one of those grails that I, I just still can't believe I have. And it's gonna sit on the back shelf behind me for years to come. And one thing that I didn't realize until I actually owned this shoe was how cool it is to turn off the lights in the studio every night after I'm done with work and just have them glowing over in the corner. That's such a cool little like extra that I get with this shoe. But guys, after about six hours worth of filming, I'm finally done showing you guys all the sneakers in my collection, except for some of the DS ones, which I talked about, but I didn't show you guys because I had doubles of them. Um, I, I can't believe I have this many shoes. It's just way more than any one person needs. And uh, like I said, I'm gonna get rid of a lot of them. For me, I think the focus will be keeping shoes that I wear and also keeping shoes that are meaningful to me and also keeping crazy grails. I think I might actually start working on only collecting like really crazy sneakers and making that you know, my end goal rather than having like the most sneakers because that's just a pointless goal. You're never gonna win that and uh, it's just, it feels gluttonous, it feels unnecessary, you know? So, I don't know, but it's been a pleasure showing you guys all these sneakers. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell down below if you haven't yet and I'll see you all in the next one.